this and look what I got. I brought it back. That's right, if you didn't see it last week, you need to go back and check out our, our, our last week's series. This is our freeze frame remote. It's not only ginormous and control like five cars at one time, this thing can actually freeze people in their place. It is super cool. Now, um, you guys might be a little bit jealous at home. They say, hey, Pat, the 80, I want one of those. Well, here, let me share this with you right now. I'm, I'm gonna pass this off to you. Um, uh, you know what? I. I don't think I have a way to really send this to your house right now, wherever you're watching. Uh, I got an idea. Why don't you pick up something like a remote around your house, a random remote around your house and, um, and, and pretend and sort of imagine that that is a freeze frame remote. For like, for the next minute, I want you to run around and try to freeze frame, freeze somebody in their tracks, you know, like your mom or dad or brother. Maybe your dog will do it. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, but I want you to pick something up. If you don't have a remote, maybe you could pick up like a block of wood or a pet rock, whatever you got and see if you can freeze frame somebody. Just for a minute. Have some fun with it. Whoever's in the room with you, freeze frame each other because we're going to give you one minute. On your mark, get set, freeze. <laughs> How'd it go? Were you able to freeze somebody in their tracks? Like when they were picking their nose, they were, and you're like, uh oh, just freeze, freeze, freeze. Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> That'd be gross, wouldn't it? Hey, man, welcome back to TC3 Kids Week Service. And today we are going to wrap up our freeze frame series. That's right, for five weeks, we've been talking about the different. Uh, different examples of Jesus' power that he showed here while he was here walking on earth. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Man, it's been awesome. Uh, and you know what's been more, more awesome? The fact that we get to do it in style. What kind of style are we talking about? We're calling it about the style where we get to read our Bible in a year. That's right. We read our Bible in a year here at TC3 Kids. We don't like to skip around. We want to know that we can see God's power just grow the way it should be growing in us. So what have we talked about so far? Well, so far in week number one, we talked about how Jesus calmed the storm in Mark chapter four. In Mark chapter four, Jesus and the disciples were in a boat as they were crossing over. They were in a boat and they were rocking and crazy because this like hurricane style storm was happening all around them. And they all got scared. Jesus though, he was asleep in the boat. And they said, Jesus, wake up. And Jesus woke up and he said, hey, peace. Be still, and the storm just stopped. That's the power of Jesus, the power that Jesus has over the, the, the things of this world. And then in week number two, oh, oh my goodness, how about this one? Jesus drives out the evil spirits. That's right, he took out a man that was infested with demons inside of him, lots of evilness, and, and those demons were controlling him, and Jesus spoke to him, and all the demons had to leave because they were scared. That's right, those little, those big old nasty demons that the devil drives around, well, they ain't nothing compared to the power of Jesus, because those demons had to leave right away. That's the power Jesus has over the devil. And in week number three, whoa, so cool, Jesus raises a dead girl in Mark chapter 5. So Jesus has a, a girl that, that, that passes away. She dies. We don't know how but or from what. But Jesus is able to go to the girl's house at, 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 at the request of the father. And, and he has compassion. He speaks over her and the little girl comes back to life. <laughs> Jesus has a power over death. And last week, wow. Talk about... <laughs> Jesus was able to feed 5,000 people. And with what was it? five loaves of bread and two fishes? With five loaves of bread and two fish, he fed not just 5,000, but lots of thousands of people. That was like maybe 15, 20,000 people all being fed by this 
a little bit of food. And we asked you the question, what's the power that God's given you? What you might think might be just a little bit of power. Your, what are your five loaves and two fishes? And, and, and what does it really mean? Well, you could really use that and expand it and explode and, and, and really grow it if you let God do that with you. Well, today, guys, we get to hear one more amazing, powerful story about Jesus as Jesus gets to walk on water. <laughs> wow, this is great. All right, today we're going to be in Mark chapter 6. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, weren't we in Mark chapter 6 last week? Yeah, well, we started in Mark chapter 4. We moved to Mark chapter 5. We moved in Mark chapter 5 week number 3. In week number 6, we week number 4, we moved to Mark chapter 6. And today we're in week number 5. We're going to be still in Mark chapter 6, but the second part of it. This is great, isn't it? Bible in a year, see how it grows? It's great. I love it. I absolutely love this. Well, we're going to be reading starting at verse number 50, uh, 45. Verse number 45. So check this out. Immediately after they were done feeding the 5,000 people, it was getting late. And I mean, Jesus just was able to feed like hundreds, like, uh, I don't know, lots of thousands of people, right? And, and with that, they're probably a little bit tired. And on the fact, uh, not to mention the fact that Jesus has been teaching all day long, right? So Jesus tells his disciples, get in the boat and go across the lake. <laughs> Jesus loves the water, doesn't he? <laughs> all right, hey guys, get in the boat and go across the lake. So all the disciples agree, okay, Jesus, I I'll catch up with you later is what he says. So, so all the disciples get into the boat and they start to get in the boat. And when they get in the boat, they start to row across the lake. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. They're getting across the lake. And then sort of like what happened in week number one, the storm, as they're getting out to the middle of the lake, the waves are getting a little bit crazy. And it starts to see this another storm starts to come and it starts splashing around. And, and, and you think about it. The disciples just had like the greatest fish and chips buffet ever, right? And then they start to probably get, they're rocking back and forth and they're like, oh, okay, just focus on me for a minute. Oh, they're, they're probably not a little bit real, real happy with what's going on. As the boat's rocking and the waves are splashing them around, they're probably, they're probably a little bit seasickness going on. Can you do that with me? Can you, can you practice seasickness? Show me your seasick face. And probably some of the guys are like, oh, this is not good. And the storm gets really, really a little bit more and more violent. And as, as they're rowing, they're like, row, row, row in the boat. But they're not gently going down the stream. No, no, these guys are rocking. It's getting, it's getting crazy. And it's getting really sort of uh, uncontrollable. And, and so, uh, uh, but this time, like, unlike last time, Jesus was in the boat with them. This time, Jesus stayed on shore. Jesus wasn't in the boat with them. Oh, no. Jesus wasn't in the boat with them. What's going to happen? Well, let me ask you this, guys. What do you think is going to happen? Are these disciples going to sink or are they going to float? <laughs> Okay, so what do you think, guys? Are they gonna sink or are they gonna float? What do you think is gonna happen? Well, let's read what happens here. Uh, I'm just getting prepared, guys. I'm prepared for the worst of it. Oh, my goodness. What happens here in, in, in Mark chapter 6? Here we go. Now, starting in, in, ver in 47, now we're in Mark 6, 47. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and they were, and they were, Jesus was all alone on land. He saw the disciples uh, straining at the oars and the wind as it became to, to throw against them. And about a fourth watch of the night, he went out to them walking on the lake and he was about to pass by them when he saw that when they saw him walking on the lake and they thought oh you got to put your best scooby-doo imitation here so the disciples are in a boat right and the water is crazy it's rocking around and they're they're all nervous and scared they're like oh my goodness we're gonna we're gonna die here it's going crazy we're getting sick in the boat the waves and then all of a sudden they see a person walking on water and they're like it's a it's a, it's a scooby-doo ghost <laughs> 
And they're like, whoa, it's a ghost out there. But it wasn't a ghost. It wasn't a ghost. You see, what happens is Jesus stops right there. He stops in the middle. He says, hey, it's, it, it's not a ghost. Don't be afraid. Take courage. It's, it's me. Don't be afraid. And then something happened. Peter said, he looked at him. One of the disciples named Peter says, hey, Jesus, if that really is you, uh, uh, call me out. Call, let us call me out into the water with you. And so Jesus says, come. And so Peter steps out of the boat. <laughs> now, he probably didn't have all this safety gear on like I've got, but he steps out of the boat and, and he, he walks on water. He looks at Jesus and he has his eyes on Jesus. He's completely fixated and looking at Jesus. Can you imagine the sensation of being able to walk on water? Like, that would be so epically awesome, right? Like you're walking on water. And he kept looking at Jesus the whole time, reaching out as Jesus reached out to him. Unfortunately, though, that's not the end of it. You see, unfortunately, something else happens. The waves start, are still crashing around. Instead of Jesus saying, hey, peace be still, like we talked about in, in Mark chapter 4 and week 1, uh, Peter gets nervous. He's no longer in the safety of the boat. He's out here in the middle of the water, and the water waves are still crashing up even a little bit more. And so he gets really scared, and Peter starts to sink. Oh, oh, oh I'm going down. Oh, help me. Jesus, and because he took his eyes off Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus and he's getting nervous. He, he starts looking at all the problems that are surrounding him and he's like, ah, help me. But don't worry, Jesus was there the whole time. Jesus reached out, took Peter, grabbed him, brought him into the boat, and he saved him. Whew. Man, that's, that's a great story, isn't it? You think about that. I got I to get out of this little safety gear here. Yeah, I don't know. I sort of like the flippers. Eh? Maybe I'll keep those on. But let me ask you this. What in life scares you? What, what is there in life that scares you? Does water scare you? Or, or does maybe falling scare you? Or, or, or maybe, maybe being alone scares you? scares you maybe all three really scare you what is it that scares you we've been spending all this time in freeze frame talking about the power of jesus what we need to remember is that if we keep our eyes on jesus we have the power to overcome those things that are fearful to us maybe you're scared the fact that your parents it, you live with two different homes and you don't know which one you should like more which one because you want to love them both but you you might like one over the other and that might that might make you scared because like you don't want to hurt someone's feelings maybe maybe you're scared because there's a that bully on in the school that wants to beat you up because you've got funny looking feet <laughs> or or you've got some ridiculous looking clothes and some really uncool looking you know swag or no swag at all. You're getting picked on and bullied. You know what? Maybe you're scared because you want other people to see you as somebody that's, that's more than just another kid. You don't want to be alone in this world. You want to be somebody powerful too. You want, but not just powerful. You, you want to be noticed and not go left alone. What scares you? Let me ask you, what, what scares you? You know, when, when, what happened was Peter wasn't scared. He knew that when he stepped out of the boat, when he stepped out of the boat and into the water, he wasn't scared because he kept his eyes on Jesus. And by keeping his eyes on Jesus, he was focused on power. I mean, like ultimate power, the greatest power, the Son of God, Jesus. And you know what? Maybe it's time for you to step out of the boat. With what you're nervous about. We could, we could sit in our boat all day long and just sort of sit here. I'm safe. I am fine. 
Don't bother me. Just leave me here. I'm good. But you know what? God didn't create you to be a little scaredy cat. He created you to be powerful and brave. Sometimes though, you gotta just be able to have the power and the courage to have the trust in Jesus. He's gonna give you everything you need to be able to conquer those fears. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? Even, even the greatest fears or whatever it is that's in your life. So, you know what, Boat? I'm gonna kick you off to the side because I don't need my fears and you don't either. And you know what? Maybe something to help you overcome your fears is some, some of God's words, right? Like Ephesians 3.20, our power verse, this whole series, right? Hey, you know what? You should need to be able to say this. If you don't have it memorized, go stand up your feet. Oh, you can say this out loud or wh whichever. Say this out loud. Stand to your feet right now. We're going to put this on screen right now. Ephesians 3.20. Say this with me. Ready? One, two, three. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. He does everything by his power that is working in us. Ephesians 3.20. I can't wait to see you next time. But before we leave, let's do one more thing. Let's pray. All right. Let's think about this right now. Think about what, what is fearful in your life. Ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Here you go. Ready? Dear Jesus... Thank you for today and the fact that we get to hear this amazing story about how you helped Peter and others conquer their fears. And Lord, we, we, we are human. We make mistakes. And, and we're sometimes we're like Peter. We take our eyes off of you. We start to sink and fall a little bit more, a little bit more. But Lord, we know, God, that you are there. Your hand is out reaching out, waiting to take us by the hand and lift us back up. Thank you, Lord, for that. That we can trust in you and have courage because you have called us to have courage. Thank you for your power that you put in us that grows every time that we call on your name. Father, thank you. We pray all of this to your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow, kids, that is great, isn't it? I can't wait till next week. Next week, we get to start a whole new series as we get really, really close into the, we're, we're getting close to the Easter season now. <laughs> wow, talk about awesome timing. Make sure you tune in next time right here at TC3 Kids' YouTube page and all over. Look at our website, tc3.church. kids Get some really super cool bonus content there. And uh, man, until then, Stay awesome. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.